Welcome to Living Life. Today we continue with another household-related passage. Yesterday we looked at the marriage relationship. Today we come to advice for children and parents, as well as slaves and masters. We read in verse 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. This teaching is based on one of the Ten Commandments, cited in verse 2, which famously says, Honor your father and mother. And it's taken from Exodus chapter 20. The idea for children obeying their parents is so basic, so profoundly woven into a healthy family life, it, it seems hard to imagine that it wouldn't be assumed by everyone. But we know it isn't. From the terrible twos to middle school angst to teenage rebellion, many families struggle to keep some semblance of order in the home. Parental teaching and authority is basic to keeping children safe, teaching them how to live, and to generating true love and affection in homes. A home without parental authority could begin to look a little like Lord of the Flies, the famous novel by William Golding which describes children on their own on an island. Chaos and destruction follow their disastrous attempts to rule themselves. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the word. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eyes on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly, as if you are serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slaves or free. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both your master and yours is in heaven and there is no favoritism with him. Children ought to obey their parents and honor their father and mother. But this intuitive advice also comes with an asterisk. Fathers and mothers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. The word provoke means to exasperate or incite this warning hints at the need for parents to do parenting well. This advice for children to obey their parents works best in the context of good parenting, not exasperating or berating or abusive parenting. Parents, getting parenting right is hard, very hard. I know it from personal experience. We had all kinds of parenting books in our house, which encouraged us to do everything from being a tiger mom, to being good listeners, to being firm, to being a soccer dad. So many books, so much advice. Listen, parenting is not easy. It is a task that will exhaust you and may take every fiber of strength from you. It may break you and destroy every easy answer you ever had about raising children. But it can also delight you and bring more joy than you could ever imagine as you live into the warmth and beauty of a wonderful family life. No one verse or few verses could ever explain all there is to know about parenting. Find some good resources out there, books, podcasts, or even some other experienced parents to talk to. If you're in some stormy waters at home with your kids, pray and do the best you can. More than likely, your kids will turn out okay.
The next group of verses on slavery are hard to understand and hard to process. These verses have been used to keep people enslaved for hundreds, even thousands of years. There is no sugarcoating these scriptures. Paul seems to accept the institution of slavery, something that is very problematic for me and certainly for thousands of years made life unbearable for perhaps millions of people who are living in the aftermath of these verses. Thankfully, slavery, beginning with the abolitionist movement here in America and in England, became to be seen as antithetical to the gospel of Christ. Have any of you seen the movie Amazing Grace? It's about the abolitionist campaign against the slave trade in the British Empire, led by William Wilberforce, who was responsible for steering anti-slave trade legislation through the British Parliament. The movie title is a reference to the 1772 hymn Amazing grace, sure you know it. The film also recounts the experiences of John Newton as a crewman on a slave ship and his subsequent religious conversion, which inspired his writing of the poem that was later used in the hymn that we now sing. Newton is portrayed as a major influence on Wilberforce and the abolition movement and Wilberforce's conviction in the cause deepens following a meeting with his former mentor, John Newton. Newton's introduced mopping a church floor, dressed in sackcloth. And he says he lives in the company of 20,000 ghosts who were slaves. As a former slave ship captain turns Christian, he deeply regrets his past life and the effects on his fellow humanity. This is the backdrop for the words, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. We've gone through an evolution in our thinking about slavery. Every person should be free. We should not accept any institution which enslaves or impinges upon our rights to be free human beings. As Paul says in another passage, in Christ, there is no slave or free, male or female, Jew or Greek, for all are one in Christ Jesus. Jesus pulverized institutions that divide and oppress people like slavery, misogyny, and racism. Let us live into that reality, my friends, and see and know the freedom we have in Christ. And thanks be to God for showing us the